What is up to all my little unicorns, new and old? It's your girl, West Indie Ray, back again with another information filled video. Today's video is going to be a really special one because I will be going into some detail about how I will be rehabbing my hair post lock comb out. This video is sponsored by Well of Professionals. Y'all know I use their Color Safe Ultimate Repair Conditioner for the actual lock comb out, which left my hair feeling so smooth. And in this video, I'll be highlighting the Ultimate Repair Miracle Hair Rescue. I'm also doing a Q&A a answering all of you guys' biggest questions for my lock comb out why I decided to comb out my locks why I decided to comb them out instead of cut them off and all that good stuff and also you'll be able to see how I did this braid style on my head so let's get into the video so what I have done right now is I washed my hair I kind of let it towel dry in my t-shirt. I don't use towels on my hair because it leaves a lot of lint. That might be some PTSD from having locks, but I have forever preferred to use just like an old t-shirt. This t-shirt is actually my mom's from like the 80s. I wear this, I put it on my head. I, I love this t-shirt. It's not 100% dry, but that is okay. And what I could say about the state of my hair at this point is that it is absolutely very thick. It's very full. It feels very soft, but there is no denying that the color treated parts of my hair are just a little bit more sparse, especially towards the ends than the top of my hair. Like the top of my hair is by far the thickest and then it starts to get a little bit more see-through towards the bottom. So right now my main goal with my hair is to rehab it as best as possible. Definitely focusing on the ends because that is the part that got the most trauma through the lock comb out. That's the part that shed the most hair which you know when it's shedding it's uneven it's not like a blunt cut. And also this is the part of my hair that is color treated which makes it way more susceptible to damage. So what I'm doing to make sure that my hair is in the best position possible especially right now while things are still new is I'm on a regular ish wash schedule so I'm washing my hair about once a week I'm also deep conditioning after washes and making sure that I condition my hair really well whenever I do styles moisture is top priority over and above styling like by far and I'm also using this Wella ultimate repair miracle hair rescue I talked about this product in my lock comb out video that I was super excited to use it I've used it twice so far since my lock comb out this will be my third time using it and I've seen other people get crazy results on color damaged hair. It's super simple to use. You can use it up to three times a week if your hair is really damaged but I've just been using it once a week. You just spray a couple sprays on your clean towel dried hair. You brush it through and you leave it on for 90 seconds and then continue styling as usual. So I'm gonna do that throughout my whole head and as y'all can see I'm focusing this product mostly on the ends of my hair because that is where I have the most damage. It says to use 10 to 20 pumps on your whole head. I'm just doing it in sections because my hair is super thick. Y'all can see here, it's real thick and then it kind of starts getting a little, a little see-through right there. So I definitely need a trim. Now while my hair sits for 90 seconds, I am going to tell you guys what the vision is with this hairstyle today. So my mom always used to do like braids in the front, twists in the back every two weeks or sometimes for me even more because I used to take my hair out after like a week. So I want to do something that looks kind of like that but I actually want to do braids because I want to put beads at the end. So that's what we're going to do today. Assuming that it has been past 90 seconds, I'm just going to get started on the parting. I think right here is pretty good. I'm going to go from the top of my head to behind the ear. This is pretty straight. Wow, wow, she did a good job. Mind you, this is only the second time that I have ever done cornrows on myself, like small cornrows on myself. At first, since I'm very new at this, I was like, should I start by doing like thicker ones and working my way up to the small? But I went straight out the gate and I did some small ones and it was really cute. So I have full confidence in myself that I can execute a really nice style with this. But she's parting like butter. I just feel like if you don't know how to do something, you're always gonna be spending money, right? You're always gonna be going to somebody to get it done if you want it. Whereas if you learn how to do something yourself, then you can easily just have a fly style whenever you want. So the first step I'm gonna do is actually to moisturize my hair. I'm going to go ahead and do that and then I'm gonna come back. So I just sprayed some moisturizer and some water in my hair. Now spraying a little bit of rose water on the ends. I'm going to try to get one braid straight down the middle. So we're pretty even and I'm gonna start on 
this one. I'm just using like a braiding jam to make sure that the hair all kind of like stays where it's supposed to stay. I'm also using a little bit of a gel. And the key is to make sure that the hair is really detangled. I'm gonna start with a minor section in the front, split it into three microscopic pieces. <laughs> this is how I hold it. Pointer finger and thumb, middle finger and thumb, and like this one is just in the back. I'm just going to braid it, so as if I'm doing a regular plait. One, two, three. And then I'm going to begin to pick up hair with each pass through. And the thing I love about braiding is that if you mess up, you can always like go back. One braid down and how many ever to go, I don't even know. I'm going to do some braids just going to the side. redid the middle one okay so we are officially at the other side of the head I wanted to do a little Q&A with you guys because I know that people have questions given my recent content I'm gonna start with the most obvious question that I've been getting and that question is why why did I make the decision to comb out my locks and why did I comb out my locks instead of cutting them off and the reason why I decided to comb out my locks instead of cutting them off is because I have cut off my hair at three separate times in my life. Once when I was in middle school because my mom had put a relaxer in my hair and then I cut it off again towards the end of high school. And then once my hair grew back to like shoulder length, I immediately was getting the itch to cut it off again. So I went to the barbershop and I cut my hair off like all the way off. Like I had a whole fade. And when I did that, I loved it for the first two days. After the first two days, I was like, why did I do this to myself? It just wasn't hitting like that. I felt like it changed the shape of my face and I just really wasn't into it. So after that, I got my fill. I think I gorged myself on that short look. I kind of just didn't want to go through that experience again if I had the choice. So that is the reason why I chose to comb my locks out instead of cut them off. Now, the reason why I ended up combing my locks out is because as y'all know and I talked about this a little bit in that first video the lock come out video I started these locks with my mom and I really really leaned into the spiritual aspect of these locks in my grief and I grieved a lot a lot of people who see my content and watch my content and see like all the perspectives I share compliment me on like oh how gracefully you've gone through this journey and I will say that I have gone through it in one of the most graceful ways that I never even thought was possible because my mom prepared me for that and because my connection with the ancestors gave me a gateway to communication and to connection and to not feeling like I've been abandoned or alone. So that has been like a really, really big game changer. But it also was very hard. Like it was very difficult at times. These locks have been through so much with me. Leaning into the spiritual aspect of it so much, it was, they're so relevant to my spiritual journey. And this fourth year of grief for me, it just has not been the same at all as any of the other years of grief. Like to be honest, it's been very beautiful. Like, and I hope that me saying that and you seeing that in my face, like I'm being so for real. I am not in the same place as I was before. And the more that I tapped into myself and into nature and things like that, because before I really used to heavily associate my connection with my mom to my locks. But now that I feel like I have completely downloaded her into my being and that I understand her more than I ever understood her, even when, you know, she was here sitting next to me like I just feel like I don't have to have that attachment anymore to my locks as if it's the only way that I can connect with my mother there was a lot of sadness wrapped in there a lot of happiness a lot of beautiful experiences that I had through my locks but the grief 
was definitely present. So that is the reason why I felt it necessary to move into a different chapter when it came to these locks because I had made it such a big part of the experience. Plus for me, one thing that y'all might not know about me is that I change my life all the time. Like I have a trend of changing my life about every two years or so. So the fact that I had locks for four whole years like that's probably the longest that I've ever consistently done anything to be real so I don't know that's just a me thing but I don't ever want anybody to feel like just because I moved the way that I moved that means that it's a trend or that it was meaningless because that is the furthest thing away from the truth like nothing is ever meaningless to me I'm just moving in a different phase in my life which I think will show all over me soon like y'all are going to be able to see exactly what I mean Okay, so the next question that I feel like everybody seems to want to know is, will I get locks again? And will I get them anytime soon? For me personally, y'all have never heard me say at any point in my lock journey, yeah, I'm gonna have my locks for four years and then after that, I'm probably gonna cut them, blah, blah, blah. I might have said, I always wanted to do a lock bob or I missed my bob when it was bob length because that is true. So y'all might have heard that, but y'all have never heard me put like a time limit or anything like that on when I was going to do something to my hair because that's just not how I operate. And I'm trying to like, I be trying to tell y'all that, but I feel like some of y'all don't really be hearing me for real. Like the way that I do things in my personal life, it's always based off of guidance. The way my camera battery was set up, it needed a little bit of time to charge, but I finished the front part of my hair. It's all done. Now we're gonna head to the back, and in the back, I'm just gonna do some plaits. So somebody asked me, am I tender-headed now after combing out my locks? Surprisingly, I am not tender-headed now after combing out my locks. Somebody said, do you feel prettier without locks? The answer to that question is no. I decided that I would never have an ugly phase with locks. So at no point having locks did I ever feel ugly at all, like at all. And also, as I've stated before, I think that having locks was like the best look that I've ever had. I think it really suited me. So although I still feel pretty, even though I don't have locks anymore, I don't feel prettier now that I don't have locks. I don't think that that would be an accurate statement to make at all. Somebody said, are you gonna do braids, twists, keep it in the afro state, what's next? I think I'm going to keep experimenting with these braiding styles a lot more. Somebody said, how does it feel to not have locks anymore? Cause they're thinking about not having locks one day as well. And for me, I've had loose natural hair for the majority of my life. Although I've been locked for the last four years, it kind of just feels like I jumped another timeline. So this doesn't feel weird to me at all. Like when I first combed them out, I kind of was like, who? Because I felt like I forgot how to do everything with my hair. <laughs> but now that I'm kind of just like into it, it feels normal. Somebody said, did I cut any of my hair after the locks were completely out? I have not cut my hair yet. I really want to get like a really nice curly haircut that will accentuate my curls and allow me to really wear my hair out more because like I said previously, I never really wore my hair out like in an afro. And I think that that would be like, you know, just a cool thing to embrace, like a black woman in her afro. Like, what might that be like? Somebody said, will you do loose natural hair content? I combed my locks out in May. And yeah, I'm going to definitely be doing loose natural hair content. If you guys want to see anything specific, make sure you leave those suggestions in the comment section below. Do you feel a sense of freedom that you've combed out your locks now? Yes, I do feel a sense of freedom. My intention with unlocking my hair was to free myself from that energy. So because I did it with that intention, I can still say that I do feel a sense of freedom, but not necessarily because locks don't have a sense of freedom that's natural about locks, you know what I mean? Somebody said, is your curl pattern any different? Not really. We're actually gonna go in with some beads, more of like a rectangle shape. I have these, so these will be at the end. What I like about these is that they have little tools to help you bead your hair with. So all you do is just put it on the bead threader like this, and then there's a little opening there. You slip your hair through, push it up and over, double the bottom over, and just fasten it with the rubber band.
All right, y'all, so it's the next day. I know you saw this look in the beginning of the video, but I just wanted to come back and just, you know, just give it to you one more time. <laughs> I'm into it like, please. Now that I know how to do this, now that I know that my hands can do this, I get it. The ancestors wanted to teach me a new skill. That is the other part of what this transition, this transformation is about. <laughs> do y'all wanna come with me? You wanna come with me? You wanna come? You wanna learn? And one of the things that I really love about this hairstyle and why I chose to do just plaits in the back is because I wanna be able to half up, half down it eventually. Like when I'm kinda getting tired of the style all the way down, I wanna be able to throw it up in a ponytail and half up, half down, maybe even in a bun. I wanna be able to play with it. So you guys let me know, do you love this look? Do you like it? Do you wanna see more inspo? Do you wanna see tutorials on these types of things? Let me know in the comment section below because I would love to show y'all what I be doing to my hair, like why not record it? If you made it all the way to the end of this video, make sure you leave a little unicorn emoji in the comment section below. And as usual, make sure you like, subscribe, comment and share, follow all my social media accounts right down there and I'll see y'all in the next video. Peace.